Hi, I'm Spencer Dinwiddie with the Brooklyn Nets. Um, and today we're going to do things a little bit differently. I've got Dr. Riley Williams on Zoom for you guys today. And so I'm going to be the one asking questions because normally he's the one asking me questions about how I feel and whatnot. And I don't like it too much. So <laughs> number one, they say you've been a doctor or you've been with the Brooklyn Nets since I was 12 years old in 1995. Tell me about that. Well, I think I think they're 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 off by uh, uh, a decade. I started with the Nets in two thousand four, right at God. the end, right, right at the end of the Jason Kidd, you know, going to the championships and getting whooped up by the Lakers and the Spurs. <laughs> uh, you know, there yeah. you go, Lakers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, it's no no hate in the game. So, uh, so we had one good year. You know, that year they had Vince and uh, Richard Jefferson and Jay Kidd doing it up. Kenyon had gone. Uh, but that was like an okay year. And then, quite frankly, it kind of went kind of went sideways after that. So, yeah, it's been long, long and dry. I actually tell a story one night, straight up, 800 people in the arena, man, in, in New Jersey. It was brutal. Oh, that's it was, tough. It was, it, was, it was tough. It was tough. But, yeah, um, <laughs> Uh, I had worked with the, the Mets as an assistant doctor for a few years through the Subway Series. Okay. And then, and then uh, the opportunity with the Nets kind of started boiling up in around 2003, and then we consummated it for the 2004-2005 season. So what is that? Is that 16 uh -huh. seasons? Yeah, 17 seasons, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, okay. No, I'm not mad at it. They actually had it on here. They, they had it flipped a little bit. They said you started when I was 12 years old, which would have been right approximately in that, you know, 2004 range but they had 1995 so they tripped yeah. me up and that's why yeah. i said two years yeah. old but we're not gonna worry say, about that yeah, yeah no, they, it's a lot of time that old i didn't think you were that yeah. old you, you know what i'm saying yeah. you, you look good man thanks man that, yeah but I, I don't mind till i'm 54 it's all good i'm, I'm keeping it together hey. you know i'm yeah, doing my thing I, I, had, I had a nice little outdoor workout before i came on the zoom with you oh we love it we love it yeah there you go. yeah social distancing <laughs> but yeah. um yeah. you told us about your start um Tell us about some of the star athletes that, that you've worked with so far. Yeah, so, you know, I mentioned a couple. You know, the, the indomitable Vince Carter is probably one of the big, biggest ones. Vince had a really nice run with us, when a super nice guy, uh, just, just a gem of a human being, really, really good to sort of see him kind of laugh. Man, talking about lasting, he, he's been yeah. in the league as Boy, long as I've been a really doctor from before, right? And still Dang. bringing it, too. I always said about Vince, man. Like, you know, people always say, "What's he like?" I'm like, you know, he knows how to he knows how to to measure himself. He always got a little gas left in the tank. He could probably go another few years for real. That's crazy. And then obviously, what Jason Kidd, Richard Jefferson, Kenyon Martin, uh, the Truth, Kevin Garnett, D. Will, Joe. Jo I mean, hey, a, it's, hey, it's been a good ride. It's yeah, been a good man. ride, man. And then, and then, and then, uh, then, then yourself. I, I was. Ah, oh, don't do that! Don't do that! I was kidding. I was kidding, Spence, about his turn in uh, Game of Zones, which I'm a big fan of. So I said, "Listen, you get a speaking role in Game of Zones." Yes, sir. You're doing all right, yes, brother. Sir. You're doing all right. I'm super, hey, super proud of you. Fun fact. Fun fact. That was my mama. I made it moment for sure. That's Call funny. my mom and everything. Yeah, but you know, just to just to finish on the thought. I mean, the whole dynamic, Spence, had changed. You know, I, I won't name a whole lot of names, but. Straight up, people would get traded to New Jersey, yeah. and in addition to the physical, I used to have to do uh, a visit to the psychologist because it was it was rough, man. It was it was a rough it was rough over here for the doctor. <laughs> oh man, I'm, hey, I'm sorry so, about that. But, yeah, uh, but what did it did it get better when you moved to Brooklyn? Like, what was that like? Yeah, that was super great. I mean. Uh, you know, it was kind of the Billy King era, and, you know, they had brought Joe Johnson and D. Will in to sort of start that off, and Brooke Lopez, obviously, was a carryover. It just, you could tell, I mean, the building, the, the location, just the energy of the city. Uh, I had mentioned that whole thing with 800, 800 fans in the arena. I mean, you never, you never had to go too far to get people interested to come into yeah. to, to, to the Barclays Center. And listen, it's been, you've been around long enough to sort of see the the evolution of interest, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it takes a while to grow genuine fan interest, you know. Yeah. Uh, those days when you would play the Celtics or, or or the Knicks, God forbid, and it would be like an away game in your own uh, arena. That, yeah. Those those are yeah. kind of the tough days. But I'm I'm super proud to be a part of it now. It's just it's been it's been a nice organically grown thing. And, and, and you listen, you're a big part of it as well. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, actually, on that note, besides me, 
what has been your fondest memory or player <laughs> working with this team? Well, you know, uh, it's actually uh, someone who's quite, quite close to you. So, you know, I'm 54 years old. I have daughters. And, and uh, unfortunately, n- nobody in my family is really super interested in basketball. So, you know, when, when I come across uh, uh, interesting young men, I, I'm interested because you guys are, are, are always sort of interesting to talk to and exchange with. So your, your, your former backcourt mate, D'Angelo Russell, yeah. Uh, a very fond memory because you know he kind of came in. You both had your issues, and and he just one at one point just sort of said something to me which resonated. He's like, "Man, Doc, I just feel like I got two dads," and and that just was like I was like, "Oh, uh, you know, yeah." Well, I mean, it's true. I think one of the reasons that I've lasted, uh, besides the fact that I think I'm a I'm a, I'm a decent surgeon, is I, I just have a genuine interest in you guys. You know, yeah. you're you're. I, I felt like I feel like. There's no way in any kind of shape or form when I was your age or even even younger, I thought this would happen. And it's just sort of happened organically. And, and the interest is genuine to me. I always treat you like, like family exactly. and, and, and kind of give you the best advice that I can. Not that I'm an expert at everything, but, you know, I've seen some, some rough things in my life and kind of come out okay on the other side. And, exactly. uh, you know, the concern and the, uh, and the care is real. So, you know, we try to keep it that way. No, we, we definitely appreciate you. Um, from, from a doctor's expertise standpoint, I mean, obviously we, we hear about the performance team uh, the Brooklyn Nets have. We, we hear about, obviously, Joe Sy taking all the measures at HSS and all that stuff. Um, can you speak a little bit about um, what the organization um, and you obviously specifically as well have done during this you know, unprecedented time with, with COVID? Yeah, well, <clears throat> you know, unfortunately, uh, without getting too controversial, I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of self-determination by – individuals and teams to sort of determine how they want to approach uh, the COVID era without getting a whole lot of, you know, top-down direction from, from the government as how best to do that. Um, I got to give a shout out to Michael Farber, uh, who's the team internist. He's been really quite proactive with not only the NBA, but also the MLS and NHL with regards to coming up with protocols in and around testing. Um, as you were a part of, I mean, we were kind of at the at the front of this thing with uh, along with Utah with regards to kind of testing our players and kind of uh, getting getting the word out that this was a, a developing issue. So um, I think the take home message is uh, everyone is super concerned with player well being and welfare, uh, and that any solution that kind of comes down the pike will 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 put player safety and player health at the forefront. My hope is that it can be done. I think it's still yet to be seen. Uh, I think the next several weeks will will kind of help us figure that out. But, but on the whole, uh, looking down the road, as is typical with these things, the speed by which vaccines and treatments and everything are, are, are coming down the pike, uh, hard for me to say what this year is going to look like. I think next year will be fine because by, by what I'm hearing, we should have some degree of protection for, for players in all sports by, you know, hopefully by Q4 of, t- of 2020. No, that, that, that's... Definitely good to hear from an expert such as yourself. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are dealing with this um, in a variety of ways, obviously. And so obviously our heart goes out to them. Um, I also need to stop saying obviously because I think I said it about three or four times. Um, you know, for, for some of you that don't know, um, I've had personal experience with HSS. Um, Dr. Williams, obviously, along with, with Dr. Carlson, Dr. Michelle Carlson, uh, did my hand surgery last year. And um, I'd like to say that, you know, after my best season to date, that they've done a phenomenal job. So <laughs> shout out HSS. And um, now I'm going to turn over the floor to the incredible Dr. Williams. Oh, so, so I get a chance at this too. Okay. Yeah. So I've said this before, um, and it's sort of pursuant to, to, to what I just alluded to. So I, I actually examined Spencer at his combine. And, and his interview with me was, still stands out in my mind as a top two interview, um, mainly because he knew who I was and, and had uh, salutations from a former trainee of mine. And, and you walked away, and I thought to myself, man, I, I hope that guy makes it. I'd love to have him on our team. You weren't, you weren't really in our, in our wheelhouse at the time, yeah. uh, uh, mainly, mainly because uh, you were coming back from an ACL injury. So. Why don't you tell us what that's like? You know, I do the surgeries and I often talk to players about what they're going through, but never having had to on a pressured schedule kind of get back. Uh, I think yeah. it's important. I think your perspective uh, in terms of having had to go through that and then endure some rough, rough years, right? Uh, For sure. Uh, can, could be helpful to, to, to patients. So what was that like? I want you to share your experience. 
Um, I mean, I would say number one for anybody that, that does get hurt, uh, pick a good surgeon. That's not a, a you know, a HSS plug here. That is, that is seriously just for your health. Obviously, there are people out there that specialize and, and do this at a really high level. And uh, to give yourself the best chance to come back, you're going to definitely need that. Um, beyond that, I actually had uh, my rehab person, Russell Payne, out in Houston. He told me, uh, nobody ever comes back the same after a big time injury. You act, you act, you either come back better or you come back, you know, worse. And it's going to be on you to kind of determine um, what type of player and, and person you're going to be and how you deal with the injury. Um, pretty much the way I, I chose to look at my injury, I just kind of attacked it. You know, if they told me I could run, then, you know, I ran as fast as I could. You know, um, if they told me I could jump, then I jumped. You know, you listen to the experts and you don't do anything prior, right? If they tell you run, you don't start jumping. You don't do things that are, you know, stupid. But when it is time for you to cross another milestone, you know, I try to do it to the best of my ability. I know a lot of people struggle with the mental aspects of recovery more than anything, and, and they tend to baby things. Um, and, and if that's right for them, that's right for them. But, you know, for me, I didn't want to be that person because I didn't want to get back to a playing type of time frame and then still be like, ah, I don't know if I can do this. I'm not sure. You know, when I was running in rehab, it was only 80%. And so now that I'm supposed to run at 100% to, you know, play basketball, I'm not quite sure yet. So I wanted to, you know, almost kind of calm my own fears or my own doubts throughout the rehab process. So when I did get back, you know, you just kind of knock on wood and say, look, you've done everything you can do. I have no regrets. If it happens again, then that's what's meant for me. Um, but we're going to put the pedal to the metal and try to have the most successful career possible. And that's part of the reason why I felt in my mind able to still declare, even though I was hurt during the uh, draft process. Yeah. Uh, some colleagues and I published an article which was very well received. And it talked about the, the psychological component. Um, just on a scale, you, you know, uh, how much of the recovery was physical? How much of it was mental for you, kind of getting back to a high level of performance? I honestly think, like, almost just like the NBA, 90% of it is confidence and opportunity. You know, your body is going to heal. If you had a good surgeon do your surgery and they didn't mess anything up, obviously, then your body is going to do what it's structurally designed to do. You know, you know obviously, you want to eat right and do things to help aid that process, but your body is going to take care of itself. It is a machine. What you choose to then do with that is completely on your on on you. You know, if you've done all the balance work and you've done all the strengthening and you're not, you know, predisposed to injury anymore, then it's about attacking it like like I said, you know. So that's that's why I, I always point to that as being the biggest hurdle for everybody. Because, you know, there's there's a lot of guys who may go through an injury like that and let's say, you know, they can leg press four hundred pounds on their, their healthy leg, but they can leg press 500 pounds on their quote unquote unhealthy leg, but they're like, ah, I don't feel strong. You know, and it's like, but you actually physically can lift more on your hurt leg, like, or quote unquote hurt leg. Like, you got to believe that you can do it. The mind is extremely powerful. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. Well, did, uh, so, so listen, so you had the ACL injury fine that kind of followed you and then you landed with us. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about like a, a little bit of, of how you felt you were kind of pulled in just from a, just from, you know, not from a organization, but from a performance standpoint, what, what was that experience like? We have access to obviously, you know, Dr. Uh, Williams, which is one of the best surgeons in the world at what he specialized in. Dr. Carlson, which is one of the best surgeons in the world, what she specialized in. Like it, it's a, um, I mean, it's just, it's a it's a blessing, obviously, um, and it keeps you in tip top shape because the the more and what do they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? Yeah, yeah, that's you know I, I hung around old people my whole life, so yeah, that's good, yeah. that's good. Well, but you know, yeah, I mean, you gotta I, do that. Yeah, well, I think the you know when 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 Sean Marks took over and we were just kind of spitballing what his vision was, I I definitely took a step back and said, you know this is going to be different. And I had a little bit of concern about having so many smart people in a room, but, but it seems to work, right? I mean, yeah. I, I'm super impressed with the value they've been able to create and, and super happy that you've been able to, to kind of fulfill your dream and vision. Again, I'm going to keep bringing up this bleacher report, but that's just too funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anything else you want to, anything else you want to um, kind of throw into the, to, to the hat here to kind of finish up, you know, I'm, I'm uh, 
uh, it's been it's been one of the uh, professional pleasures of my of my career just watching you uh, uh, kind of navigate through successfully and kind of land in this like you know like you like a real NBA guy, uh, great family. I'm just 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 super proud of you, man, and, and just just wish you all the best as you continue throughout your career and the rest of your life. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. And and just uh, the added note, he did say uh, it was his trainee, but it quite literally was ironically his understudy. Uh, he did my surgery in Colorado. He was our team doctor in Colorado. And so without, uh, you know, Dr. Williams by proxy, I uh, would not be in the NBA because if I had a lesser surgeon that wasn't taught by a great surgeon, then who knows where I'd be. So, you know, always, always my deepest gratitude for sure. Yeah, but, you know, and all things considered, and this is a good, this is a good party note, because you never know how life is going to go. So fine, I meet Spencer at this combine. I have these thoughts about him. And, you know, how, how long was it, Spencer? Three years, two and a half years between then and, and yeah. when you landed with us? Yeah. When, when your name came across the, just, you know, just because they're always looking around the league and people who may be available in terms of a development uh, person or someone who they thought may, may have some potential. Uh, your name flashed across and, and uh, uh, you know, Sean, he always does. He says, hey, you know, any, any comments? And I just remember writing an email. I said, I love this dude. <laughs> 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 so, you know, I will say there have been people at the combine who I couldn't even get to look me in the eye. So, you know, you yeah. always want to, you just never know in your life, like how things are going to like, you know, who you're going to meet, who you're going to encounter and, and how things are going to go. So, so anyway, uh, I'm glad that we had time to kind of, kind of do this and get together. I think, we, you and I would have a good uh, future on Instagram Live, don't you think? Hey, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Dr. Riley Williams uh, at uh, Hospital for Special Surgery and Spencer Dinwiddie, star guard for the Brooklyn Nets, oh, signing man. off until, until our uh, COVID-less, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, championship-directed uh, team uh, of the future. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. All right, you guys. Have a good night. Good night.